What is going on guys? So me and York just finished recording the RASP video. What the heck is RASP like? If you missed that video, make sure you guys check it out. But in this video, we're going to give you guys five tips on kind of how to prepare for RASP. All right, so the first big tip that we're gonna talk about, I kind of talk to you guys about it with preparing for basic training and stuff all the time. Make sure you're physically ready, but even more so, you should be really physically ready for reps, right? Yeah, make sure you're going into that. Make sure uh, you don't necessarily have to be a PT stud. I've seen a lot of PT studs wash out of that course, but at the same time, go in there with all the tools you can, like as much of an advantage as you can create for yourself, it's definitely worth going in there. Yeah. Be good at climbing ropes, be good at doing pull-ups, be good at like just have control of your body weight, be able to do pretty much any body weight exercise to a high uh, degree and you should be, you know, and relatively then, fine. And then you'll be good to go. Yeah, you should be good to go. Make sure you can do push-ups and a lot of them because chances are any little discrepancy with your push-up form, they, they don't play any games, they're just not gonna count it. So yeah. if, you're, if you're one of those guys who uh, like sags when he's doing push-ups and he's not touching his chest to the ground and he's touching like his pelvic region instead, you know, it's not, that's, that's no, that's no bueno. Like they're yeah. not gonna be like messing around with that. Yeah, I, I heard for you, for your last PT test that you did, like how many push-ups to give them an idea did they take off of your uh, PT test? They counted 56 of my push-ups, and this is like, uh, it's not really anyone's fault, I guess, other than my own, but I'd say I probably did close to about 80, 85. It was definitely going into that test, I'd felt better about push-ups than I ever have in my life. And mm -hmm. it's still just, I just didn't make the cut when it came to like the quality form they wanted to. So yeah. think about that whenever you're going through and like, uh, some graders are gonna grade differently than others though, so that's another thing you gotta look out for. Some uh, graders want like your arm to like bend back behind you and stuff. Uh, others just wanna see parallel push-ups. Others wanna see your chest touch the ground. So that's another thing is know who your assessor is. Like if you know that it's Sergeant so-and-so, okay, I've heard that he likes to see people bouncing off the ground, so make sure you touch your chest. Yeah, stuff so like that. Always, in my opinion, prepare for the worst. Yeah, right. For so sure. when you're practicing doing your push-ups, when you're practicing doing stuff, do the best form possible. So if you get that grader that you know you uh -huh. can kind of be a little bit you know, more shaky on, then, then it's just another advantage for yeah. you guys. Yeah, so in. keep that stuff in mind. The next thing, we talked about this a little bit earlier, and that is your mindset. You Having get, the right mindset, right? You gotta have the right mindset going in. Uh, I'd say if there's one thing that detracted from my own ability to pass that course is definitely the mindset. Like, I wanted it. I wanted to be a ranger more than anything, but I don't think I wanted it for the right reasons, you know. Certain people, they wanna be there for career progression, uh, you know, to provide for their families, what have you, but uh, being like a, you know, 18 year old, 19 year old going into there, I think I was going into there with a little bit of a warped mindset about what I wanted from the program and stuff, and I think that ended up biting me in the ass yeah. at the end of it. So, go in there and make sure you're clear in what you want and how bad you want it, because as soon as you start to get shaky, you know, that, that white van driving behind that formation is looking real nice when, you're, <laughs> when your feet are bleeding and you know, you've got two more days left. So yeah. it's one of those things. So really, and then what'd you say like, when you're going through that first and second week, really try to remind yourself or have a reason kind of why you're there so that you can remind yourself of that, you think? Yeah, I was never the I was never the one who had an issue personally with ever really wanting to quit. I never, I don't know, like I played football, wrestled, ran track in high school, like that all kind of like will clear out your mind a lot if you're already an athlete going into these things, you know? Just having that no quit mentality going into something's always an advantage, but one of my friends, my actually my best friend going into that course quit on me on the second day, and I know that, that took a chunk out of me, I was like, damn. <laughs> but uh, I remember I had another friend and he was actually like loosening up his ruck straps to go ahead and quit and I saw it like I came up to him as he was doing it I didn't know like why he was doing it you know you make a lot of adjustments getting rid of the ruck palsy and stuff because your arms will start to hurt but so I didn't really know what he was doing and I was like what's going on man and he was like yeah I think this is this is the end of the road for me he's <laughs> about to go hop in the van and I said I was like this, my verbatim words were, don't be a pussy. 
<laughs> and that's all he needed to hear, I guess. So he ended up actually going through both classes with me. So, so maybe have a buddy that'll motivate you or a little bit. Mm -hmm. so, or, or you could even tell somebody like myself, you know, you get to the beginning of RAS and you, you're, you're with somebody like, hey bro, like if I'm ever like doubting myself, just like remind me or push me, right? You think that, I think that would help me a lot if I'm ever down having somebody be like, no, like get yourself together and let's let's keep pushing it. So that, so that's a pretty good thing in my opinion. The next thing that we talked about in our other video was land navigation. Land nav is one of those things. It's kind of hard to, you're gonna get like on the board classes during basic training, potentially AIT, depending on like what sort of AIT you go through, OSIT. But the thing about land nav for me is it's never been something that I don't learn land nav off a board. Like I think land nav is one of those things you have to like go walk a land nav course. You mm -hmm. have to physically do land nav and get those azimuths and get your points and do all that to actually be a good land navigator, to be a competent land navigator. So it's one of those things where it's kind of hard to say, like just be good at land nav, but it's really something that you're gonna have to just be able to perform at a high proficiency because if you go in there, you know, and you're like struggling, you're gonna be tired, you're gonna be hungry, your feet are gonna hurt, your back's gonna hurt, you're gonna be sucking during cold range going through that land nav course but you gotta power through it, grow a pair, and uh, yeah, so, try to pull out a bunch of points off of that. So Yeah, so when you're going through this, when you're learning land nav at basic, if you have an option 40 contract, make sure you kind of know that, hey, I need to actually understand this, because at basic, you do land nav in a group, mm -hmm. and you could be that guy who just, you know, like walks it, yeah, yeah just, just kind of like skates by off of other people. But. Yeah, so actually learn land nav when you get there. I do have a video on it, it's basically more or less about plotting points and getting asthma and stuff like that. So if you guys want to watch that, feel free to watch that. The next thing has to do with water training, which is something you don't do at basic right now, but you do do it at RASP. Yeah, so whenever I went through RASP, how they did it was everyone lined up, you were in uh, your OCPs and your boots and everything. And essentially they put you in like a plate carrier and they give you like a little rubber ducky, which is just like a replica M16. And they tie it to your person with 550 cord so they weren't having to like fish it out of the water every time. But uh, they push you and like the cadre come up to you and they grab a hold of your vest. And usually, at least for me, they had us uh, read like a stanza of the Ranger Creed or will recite a stanza of the Ranger Creed. So they, you know, can be like, never shall I fail. And then they push you into the water and like you'd go back and you'd land, like you'd sink down a little bit. And while you were under the water, you have to get rid of the weapon. You have to take off your plate carrier and like get rid of it. Well, personally for me, I got wrapped up around my legs from the 550 cord. So whenever I was trying to swim afterwards, cause then you gotta do like a hundred meter swim after you uh, lose all your weight my feet got tangled up so i was like kind of like barely my mouth was like barely above the water i was about to like drown and stuff until the cadre come and came and untied me and then they were like all right now swim but i was so tired at that point that i was like just doggy paddling i was really sucking so they like kind of you know dragged me over to the side of the pool and got out and i had the opportunity to do it again but it was not but two minutes later so i didn't really <laughs> have any time to rest so pretty much the exact same situation happened gotcha. <laughs> and then uh, they thought that I was like some jamoke who couldn't swim but I wasn't I just kind of sucked on it yeah but. so what we were talking about is make sure you kind of if you can't swim try to learn how to swim you know and it, even if you are like a competent capable swimmer uh, if you have the opportunity there are pools at Fort Benning a couple of them so just try to get in the water, like get comfortable in the water again before you go through that because that's that's a stupid reason to fail that course for failing the water portion. Yeah. And then the last reason that we're going to talk about. Make sure everyone, it's, it's hard to be friends with everyone, especially in a course like that. You're going to, you know, you're going to stand up for what you believe in, you know, you're going to get into heated arguments and stuff, but don't be the guy that they catch hanging out in the lockers while everyone else is sweeping and mopping. Don't be the guy that's, you know, the cereal doesn't finish his MRE guy. Like, don't be the guy who every time the cadre's like, all right, hit the wood line because of 
don't have that be your name. Don't just try as much as you can not to be a shit bag. It's gonna be kind of hard for some people. I know some people are just like, that's their standard is they're either dumb or a shit bag. And either way, you're gonna not be liked by your peers, but whatever you can do, make it to where you don't get negative peer evaluations because the cadre won't always be able to see you, even though it kind of feels like they are. It's just not possible. But people who are always able to see you is the people who you're in that course with. Those are the guys who are gonna be helping you carry those logs, helping you carry those water cans. So even if you don't like the guy, if he doesn't quit on you, respect that about him, you know, if you're in week four, week five, and even if he's a dickhead, you know, just be like, all right, this guy's, this guy's got some nads on him. Try to respect that about each other, especially the deeper you get into that course. It's, an, it's another stupid reason to get kicked out of that course. It's just because someone else doesn't like you. Peer vows, yeah. So keep that in mind. Peer vows are kind of a big deal. You don't want to be that bottom, that bottom dude. Because like you said, when the instructors aren't there watching you, your peers are there watching you, and then they're gonna read those peer evals of you. Because again, this whole RAS, the A in it is assessment. They are assessing you, and part of that assessment is the peer evals. And if everybody hates you, you don't want to have somebody that everybody hates in the 75th. That's just not gonna be good for, um, what do you call it, like cohesion yeah. of the unit. Like that's just not gonna be a good thing. So make sure you kind of, uh, Think about that when you're doing things. Like, don't screw over your battle buddy, you know, for whatever reason, because that might show up on the peer battle. The Ranger community is a small one. Even if you don't get peered out, going into your first unit, you know, you guys might be in the same company together. And then if he gets, if he's cool with one of the NCOs there, and he's telling that NCO, hey, this guy's a shit bag, this guy fucking sucks at his job, this guy this, this guy that, you know, it's not a good way to be. So uh, whatever you're doing, you know, try to, you're wearing your name on your shirt. So whatever you do in life, you know, that's something that I always try to remember is I got, you know, something that I'm always gonna have with me on my shirt whenever I'm in the army. So try to like respect that, respect, you know, your country. So one of those sorts of things that, okay. you know, always do what you can, uh, try to make people proud, kind of. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. Those are basically five things of how to prepare, how to get your mindset right for RAS. It was a great video, I enjoyed it with York here. Again, if you guys missed the last video where we talked about RAS, check it out. Ask him as many questions as you possibly can on Instagram. I kind of, now I kind of feel like I just, <laughs> I just wanna get you guys to do it. So follow him on Instagram. The links are gonna be in the description. I'll probably overlay it on the screen, but that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. That would be awesome if you want to stick around some more of my videos and the other RAS video. Check it out. Hit that subscribe button. That would be freaking amazing. If you're not following me on Instagram and Snapchat, make sure you do that. It would make my day. Also, hit the notification bell button. I didn't say that last video. I don't say it all the time, but it is amazing. YouTube, they just want you to hit the notification bell button. I want you to do it. So make sure you do it. I hope you guys have an amazing freaking day, and I'll see you uh, later. Drop.